Welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be giving you five tips to help you have better looking flux core welds. Now flux core welding is a really common process for beginners because you still have a wire feed, um, but typically the uh, equipment is less expensive than a full on MIG welder. You also don't need to buy a gas bottle that can cost just as much as the welder does. So it's a, it's a really good way to start out and you follow these tips you'll be welding like a pro in no time. So for the welds in this video I'm going to be using the uh, titanium flux 125 welder that I picked up at Harbor Freight about a year ago and it's been a good machine. I've gotten some really good welds out of it and I think it's pretty similar to what a lot of people have at home. So the first tip and this goes for any welding process really is to get comfortable because you're not going to be able to do any of the other things if you aren't feeling comfortable wearing your protective equipment, your welding hood, your jacket, and your gloves, and uh, you know if, if you feel awkward holding the, uh, the welding torch. So there's a few tricks that I have to be able to do this. The first is use a second hand to steady you, right? So I'm right-handed and I'll typically hold this with my right hand um, if the position allows. And then I'll either put my left hand vertical like this to support the MIG gun or sometimes that'll get a little bit hot on the back of your hand so you can put your thumb, pinky to your thumb beneath that as a rest and as you weld along you can just pivot along there to move around so start out taking some dry runs and just getting comfortable holding the equipment before you even try to make a weld. Step one, get comfortable. Tip number two Watch your puddle and not your arc. So if you watch what I'm welding here, the way that I have the camera set, you just see a ball of light and smoke, and if that's what you're looking at while you're welding, you're gonna have a really hard time getting a nice weld. You need to see the puddle of the molten metal. So watch here as I change the camera settings so you can start to see the puddle emerge. And you'll see two different puddles. One will be a puddle of molten metal, and one will be a puddle of slag coming over the top of the weld. So you want to watch that puddle of molten metal and learn to distinguish the molten metal from the slag that's coming over top of it so you can see where your weld actually is, right? And so once you can see that, it becomes much easier to put the weld where you want it to be. Tip number two, watch the puddle. Tip number three, watch your stick out. The stick out is how far the wire sticks out of the contact tip in the mid gun and you want to have that about a half inch with a machine like this and what a lot of people will do is they'll tend to uh, as they weld they'll move further and further away and you can watch as I'm welding here and I'm moving you know from where it's running pretty well further and further away you can see that the arc is kind of going out and it's not uh, penetrating into the material very well because that wire sticking out is acting like a big resistor and reducing the voltage that's actually getting to my material so you need to be really mindful of your stick out and this goes back to the first tip of getting comfortable and making sure that before you run a uh, weld you check and do a dry run to make sure you'll be able to maintain that distance all the way along. Tip number three, watch your stick out. Tip number four is to be mindful of your angle as you're welding, right? And when you're welding with a flux core like this you need to be uh, dragging uh, most of the time. Uh, the one exception is if you're welding vertically, sometimes you can uh, push uphill a little bit. But, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, you're probably going to be welding more in the flat and horizontal position. And what you'll want to do is as you weld, let's say you were welding this butt joint right here, you would be vertical into the plate and then you would drag along like this. Now if you're welding this T-joint, you'd want to be 45 degrees into there and then you'd also want to drag by about 10 degrees. So be mindful of your angle and take some dry runs, make sure you can maintain that all the way along. That's tip number four, watch your angle. Here just to do a little experiment, I am doing a pretty aggressive angle uh, pushing with the flux core weld and you can see how much spatter and uh, metal is flying out of my uh, weld pool there and so that's not really working as well as I'd hope not nearly as well as here where I'm maintaining a bit of a drag angle so keep an eye on your angles and uh, that'll help you quite a bit. Tip number five is to maintain a consistent travel speed. Now when I'm welding I'll usually make some movement with the uh, welding gun to 
help me to see where the joint is and to uh, fill, the, fill the joint in. And so you can see as I'm welding here, I'm weaving back and forth just a little bit. I'll weave less with a flux core welder than I would with a MIG welder. You can also run stringer beads a lot of the time where you'll just run all the way across straight. But I think adding a little movement to this is helpful. So as you weld along, maintain a nice consistent speed and you'll come out with a bead uh, that's equally nice. Okay, so these five tips, these are the very basics. And if you master these basics, your welds are going to look great. So get out there, give it a try, and we'll see you next time.